Hello together. In the following 12 minutes, I would like to demonstrate how fast and easy it can be to do a simulation with OpenFoam. I know that a lot of people are struggling with the convergence or the right boundary conditions in the simulation. I want to point out the way of my complete workflow of the simulation in OpenFoam. My workflow is starting with the CAD model, over meshing, the setup of the model, the boundary conditions and the post-processing as well. In this video I'm using Helix as a front-end for OpenFoam. From my view this is the most efficient way to perform a CFD simulation. You can see the boundary conditions on this slide. We are facing a 3 outlet, 1 inlet problem here. If you liked that video then please give us a visit under engineerdo.com. I've put everything under the video in a link where you can download the original SDL geometry and also the folder structure for OpenFoam. If you have any questions or critique, then please leave a comment. Let's get started. The first step is to model the geometry in a CAD system. It does not matter which CAD program you're using. Free CAD program could be Autodesk Fusion 360. The task is that we are performing a simulation of a water pipe. That thing has three outlets and one inlet. Additionally, we have a little hole in the pipe where a pressure gauge could sit. This hole needs to be closed. The geometry is loaded, in my case, into SOLIDWORKS. The only thing for this part in the CAD is an export as an STL file. You click on File, Save As, and then you choose STL as a file type. From the processing you can see that we are facing a lot of nodes. That comes from the rounded surfaces in our part. In academics it's often told that you will need a good surface mesh to generate a good meshed volume. From my experience that's not true. The only really important thing for your mesh is that it is waterproof. The structure itself does not matter. After we have our mesh, we import it into Blender. Blender is an open source animation software, which is pretty efficient in mesh handling. The benefit is here that we can manipulate single nodes of the mesh as we like. Later for our simulation, we need to define in and outlets. This is done by separate meshes. One mesh for every patch in the simulation. That leads us to five in total. Four for the in and outlets and one for the wall of the pipe. To import, you hit File, Import, STL. The STL comes as saved from the CAD. Check the dimensions here. It could be that you have to scale the model from Imperial to Meter. The simulation will run in SI units standardwise, what I definitely recommend. The STL is not orientated with Z pointing upwards in our case. That is more a personal preference, but I recommend to use always the same set of coordinates. For me, Z vertical, X and flow direction, and Y perpendicular. To rotate the case, you select the object with the right mouse click, then press R for rotate and then X around the X axis. And then you type in 90 and hit enter. The next step is to close the in and outlets with waterproof faces. My workflow looks like this. I make duplicates of the imported part for every face I need. The outlets will be the upper openings. To duplicates, press space and then type in duplicate. Hit enter and you will have it. Repeat this four times. Now rename the duplicates. This is not necessarily needed, but it will come handy on larger projects. The first step in mesh editing is to close the little hole. For that I select the pipe in the browser on the right side. Then I hit tab to enable the edit mode of Blender. Now all nodes are selected. To deselect everything I press A. The goal is to select only nodes at the edge of the hole I want to close. I zoom in and I select with the right click a single node. Then I press Ctrl on the keyboard and select the node a few nodes away. You see that the middle nodes are all selected. Proceed with this until all nodes are selected. Then I hit F. This will make a plate between all selected nodes. After I'm done, I make the pipe invisible by clicking on the little I button to make sure that I'm not accidentally editing another part. I select the part, hit tab and zoom out to the outlet. Then I select one node and select all others by pushing control. Now after I've selected everything, I close the opening. Now I have to delete everything else because we want to have only the lid. Therefore I change to face select mode in the bottom of the bar. Now I go to select inverse or you can hit Ctrl plus I and now hit X to delete every face except our new face. For the next opening I will show the process on the nodes. Selecting, closing with the key F and then inversing. Now I repeat this for every other opening. Now we have every opening closed and because the nodes of the lid are on the point identical with the base part, the pipe, the structure is absolutely waterproof, which is pretty important for the meshing later. Now I export every part as a separated STL file. Please make sure that you choose ASCII on the left side of Blender, do not use binary. Now I repeat this 
for every other opening. Now I changed to a Linux computer. It's possible to do everything on your Linux machine if you want, but because my cat runs under Windows, I do Blender there as well. That makes change between the programs faster. After opening a shell, I go to the directory that includes the SDL files and start Helix by typing it in. In the pop-up window, I click on New. The first input is the name of the project. This will be Pipe Simulation. I would like to use four processors in the simulation. All of them shall be aligned in X directory, because our pipe is a pretty linear object. After clicking OK, a new project folder is created. In the new window, I start with the generation of the mesh that is used in the simulation. I am here in the tab Mesh. The first entry is Base Mesh, which will be in this case a block mesh. I choose User Defined in the drop-down menu. The next step is to import the wall meshes. Therefore, I click on Geometry and then STL. All files are selected and opened. Now we see the base mesh in our geometry. We want to simulate. Going back to base mesh on the left side, I click on the size button under the bulb to auto adjust the mesh to the size of the STL files. Because we have 10 elements in every direction, the mesh is not even. To see the vertical structure of the mesh, I click on the third coordinate system on the right side, where that is pointing vertically. Now all cells are set to a size of roughly 10 mm by changing the number of elements in each direction. Now the base mesh should be ready. The next step is to set the mesh refinements at all walls of the geometry. The refinement gives an upper and a lower border. The upper border will be set to 1 for all mesh geometries. The algorithm can now choose where it's sufficient not to reduce the cell size, but if possible, um, the cell size will be set to half of the base mesh. This will lead to 8 cells at the wall where originally has been 1. The next step is to define the material point. That's the point in the volume that we want to simulate. I leave it on triple zero within the pipe. Now I click on create to let open foam use block mesh for the base mesh and snappy hex mesh afterwards. This process is shown in the shell below. It takes a couple of seconds. For bigger geometries and finer meshes, this can take a couple of hours. I recommend to start with a simple mesh and then try to do refinements if necessary. If snappy hex mesh is ready, the mesh is shown. On the very right side, on the bar, I can choose now to see the actual mesh edges. With the mouse, I can zoom in. It's becoming visible that the mesh is only refined at the wall, while the inside is still pretty coarse. This helps to reduce the computational effort without sacrificing result quality. To proceed, I click on the second tab, which is called Case Setup. I start with Solution Model in the very top. Under Solutions, I click on the right panel on Transient Solution because we want to see changes of the flow over the time. The medium will be water, so I choose Incompressible. The Turbulence Model is set to K Omega SST. This is from my experience the most stable model. The next step is to click on Materials on the left. I choose Water by clicking on Change Material and then click on water on the left side. The next step is to change the boundary conditions. From the start, every surface starts as a wall. The in and outlets need to be changed. We are facing a multi-inlet outlet problem here. The inlet must be changed at patch type to patch. In the momentum panel to volumetric flow rate inlet, the flow will be then perpendicular to the surface of the inlet. In this example, we set the inflow rate to 10 liters per second or 0.01 cubic meters per second. In the pressure panel, I set zero gradient. Outlet 1 is also set to patch. Momentum to pressure inlet outlet velocity. The pressure panel stays with a total pressure of zero. Outlet 2 and 3 are also set exactly the same. Patch type patch. Momentum to pressure inlet outlet velocity and the pressure panel stays with a total pressure of zero. For the pipe wall, we can leave everything as it is because it is a wall. Now the solver settings must be changed. The solution algorithm goes to pimple. The non-orthogonal correctors are set to one to increase solver stability due to some minor mesh issues. The runtime controls dictate the time and time step of our simulation. The end time should be 10 seconds. For the time step, I choose 0.0001 seconds. This should be lower than the current number of 1 for the start. This increases solver stability as well. I check on the adjustable time step here and set the maximum current number to 5. This is possible since we are using Pimple as the main solving algorithm. That makes the simulation pretty fast in computation. The max time step should be not higher than 0.02 seconds. 
Write control is also set to 0.02 seconds. The results should be written as compressed data to save disk space, with the disadvantage that the post-processing will take a blink longer. The field initialization is always a good idea, to reduce the initial shock of the simulation and increase the stability of the convergence. In this case we can use a potential flow to initialize the simulation cells depending on the chosen boundary conditions. Then I hit the initialize button and wait 1 or 2 seconds. At the tab solver I click on run and enjoy the convergence of our simulation. Because of the solver properties I have chosen here, the pressure field is solved more than one time each time step. To smooth that out you can change the moving average on the bottom panel to a period of 4. Now we wait until we have reached the 10 seconds we wanted to simulate. On my computer that takes me roughly 12 minutes. I am doing the post processing in Paraview. It can be downloaded for free. To open the simulation results I click with the right mouse button in the pipeline window on the left side and open in the simulation directory the pipe simulation.foam file. This contains a script that lets Paraview open all written result files. With a click on apply the files are loaded into Paraview. Because I have chosen a multi-core simulation at the beginning the results are now composed by OpenFoam so that every core has its own results. To visualize them I have to change the drop down menu at case type to decompose case and click apply to load the first result file. With a click to the Y panel I am changing the view. Now I put the slide through the pipe and have a look to the inner results. The slide should also be orientated perpendicular to Y. I click apply. Now I can choose which result field should be displayed. I choose U for velocity. With the controls I can jump to the next step or I can scale the color map. To make the displayed image a bit nicer I hit the second left button and press edit on the very right side. Here I can adjust the font type and the scale for the annotations. I keep the part short because it contains no further important information beside a good looking result. With a click on the fast forward button I am jumping to the last frame of the simulation and have a look on what we have computed so far. It is very obvious that not all outlets are used by the flow in the complete cross section. To save an animated result video I click on file and then save animation. The first pop up window can be ignored. The best results are generated if PNG files are exported and composed by FFmpeg to a video file. This is the result of our simulation. If you like what you have seen, please leave a like or a comment on which topic you would like to know more about. Please visit us under engineerdo.com. Have a nice day and thanks for watching.